Question number one. Please describe your team's project. Our project, Sharing the Empire State's History, uh, was created to look at ways to use technology to expand access to historic items in the New York State Library's special collections. Um, we looked at two ways of doing this in particular, uh, crowdsourcing transcriptions of manuscript materials and creating podcasts to highlight specific collections. Crowdsourcing, you may be familiar with, it uses online volunteers to provide content or services. An example would be Wikipedia. Uh, for our project, we wanted to set up a system where we could post digital scans online and then interested volunteers could transcribe them. Uh, for the podcasting, we wanted to use a podcast to feature some of those transcribed materials from our collections. Uh, for both the podcast and the transcriptions, we chose to use the same collection, a series of letters uh, that were written by a soldier who was stationed in New York State during the War of 1812. And why did you want to do this project? Well, as Diane mentioned, the project was born out of a desire to create new and interesting ways to showcase the New York State Library's special collections. The State Library has a history of providing access to its collections through its online digital archive and online finding aids. With this project, we really wanted to use new technology tools such as podcasting and crowdsource transcription software packages to create new interests, a new level of interest for our users. The tools are really just a catalyst to generate the interest, and we hope, the hope is that our users would work together with us to promote our collections, use our collections more, and really get involved with our collections through this process. It is a particularly uh, timely project for educators and students who need to use nonfiction materials for their new learning standards. And what did you want your project to achieve? One goal was to, as Diane and Lynn have both alluded to, was to spotlight one-of-a-kind documents in the State Library's collections. The documents in the collection date back to the 1600s, so there are 400 years of New York State history in the collection. A second goal was to get people excited about New York State history, and we thought that through the transcription that would appeal to people who like to solve puzzles, and the podcasting would be for people who like to listen to stories. And our third goal was to find an easy and efficient way to transcribe documents. And has your project been successful? I believe our project has been successful. We were able to do a demo podcast, and we learned a great deal about the podcasting experience by doing that demo. We were also um, able to learn a great deal about the crowdsource transcription piece of this project, both through our research we did on our own and talking to actual experts in the field. Finally, I think we were successful because we worked very well together as a team, and we each brought a strong set of skill sets to the project. What were your biggest successes and challenges? Well, I think Lynn already covered um, our successes, so I'll just jump in on the challenges. Um, the biggest challenge definitely revolved around the transcription software. Uh, there were a lot more options out there than we had originally anticipated. But in spite of that, um, it was difficult to find a good match. Um, they weren't necessarily out-of-the-box solutions. Some of them um, were developed in-house. Uh, some other agencies doing this had um, done extensive customization to something that was already out there. Some of them might have required um, a type of server or a type of software that we didn't have available to us. Um, and then there were some options uh, that could have hosted a project for us, but of course there was a fee involved in that. So what we ended up doing for our pilot was um, using a wiki wiki software doing some customization ourselves but on a very minor scale um, while it worked to some extent for what we wanted at the time we very quickly realized that it was much too labor intensive um, to be a long-term solution for us so this is the part of a part of the project that is still up in the air for us we're still looking for that um, ideal software match 
So the benefit of hindsight, what would you change about your original project's concept? I think, I think we all think that the project itself was a good project, is still a good project. Um, and if it's fully implemented, it's going to be a great tool to get people interested in the state library's documents. The problem has been with transcription. It would have been nice, as both Lynn and Diane have said, if we could have had an over-the-counter transcription piece of software to work with. And do you think the project can be used by any library anywhere? Well, um, as we've, as we've mentioned, the overall goal of our project was to find ways of using technology to um, expose more people to the collections, to, to share them with more people. And as a general goal, that's something that we would certainly recommend that any library with this type of collections um, look into. But whether our particular solution would, would be a good match for them, you know, that's another question. Um, for the specifics of the project, as far as the crowdsourcing transcriptions goes, that we would definitely recommend only to uh, probably larger libraries, ones that you know might have IT specialists or developers on staff. Uh, if they have control over their servers and the kind of software that can be used there, that would also be important. Uh, as far as the podcasting goes, that has a much lower um, entrance bar as far as technology is concerned. Um, although we chose to go with a more professionally produced podcast for our pilot, we found many examples of DIY podcasts that were being done um, in-house with minimal equipment and um, you know, were producing pretty good, pretty good quality result. Um, what a library would need in that case is um, the skills for editing, for writing, uh, for narrating, and of course, if they have a passion for their collections and probably most important, the time to invest in this project, that would also that would also uh, be a big help to anybody that wanted to try this same sort of thing. So, would you want libraries to replicate this project, build on it, or redo it from scratch? Well, as Diane mentioned, we are not the first library to do podcasting or crowdsource transcription projects. We did not invent the wheel with this project, so to speak. Um, what we have done, I think, though, that other libraries can look to is developed a process or an approach for tackling some of these um, techniques. And that is, in our case anyway, to start slow, first by learning about these different techniques, doing some demos, investigating the transcription piece especially, and I think this project probably speaks more to the smaller libraries than the larger libraries in that we want them to feel that this is something they could do. They could replicate what we've done here by starting small and taking these techniques one at a time and then build upon them in the future. So what are the next steps for your project? First and foremost, I think we'd like to get a nice transcription software package so that we can actually get some of these up there. We have a great collection and that's probably going to involve looking at some funding sources so that we can get money to get items transcribed or get people to do the podcast and marketing the collection, marketing the whole, what we've got. Um, so lastly, what were your top three resources? Well, number one is the collection. If we didn't have all the really cool stuff that we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 400 years worth of New York State history, and every day someone finds some little gem in some collection that is good either to be transcribed and put out there or to make a little piece for a podcast. I think our second biggest resource was just our collaboration among team members. We all brought um, unique skills to the project, and we all brought a high level of enthusiasm to the project. It was also very helpful that we were all located geographically in the same building, which made having meetings, sharing files, and all those aha moments possible. And for the third resource, I would say that um, it was, I think, basically the amount of information that was available online to us 
Uh, it really helped us to be able to look, for example, at some other transcription projects and see what software they were using, um, what uh, kinds of documents they were transcribing, whether that might be something that could work for us. Uh, we also looked or, or listened to, I should say, a lot of other podcasts to see what was being done in that line. And it's, um, it's just amazing the amount of information um, that's out there that uh, can contribute to the project and perhaps spark some, spark some new ideas. And uh, we did quite a lot of our research that way.